you know, all the great markets. So what's the main secret to, to get there? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little um, secret. When you're a minority, you have a better chance if you get, it's called a, a disadvantaged business or a women-owned business. Women-owned business. Yeah, mm-hmm. that helps so much because you get in front of the line. And a lot of times you don't have to do some of the the funding that goes through on shelf space, like you said. Some 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 companies will say, okay, you're a women owned business, we'll let you see how long it you know, they'll give you a period of time. And if you do well, then you stay. If you don't, you go. So it's one of those things where, yes, it is, it's expensive and we're dealing with that. You know, right mm-hmm. now we have mm-hmm. a, a customer that Right, and, and and the thing is, is we've spent money going uh, on on shows on mm-hmm. on uh, like trade San shows. Francisco trade shows, um, not only in California but in in Texas and different places um, to introduce it so people could see it. So you know, we spend the money to to have the Whole Foods and the Targets and the Gelsons and all of the all of the 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 the, the, you know, the customers that we want. And so it just, you know, it's just starting to, um, to all come together, you know. But the we pa- don't have the paperwork want. is yeah. no. But so, the, pa- the paperwork is crazy. Oh my we, god! We, we just we're we're on the shelves right now as of a, a couple of weeks ago at Gelson's. So now, how do you do it? You knock the door. You just go and walk yes. to the store. Where is the manager? And you start talking like that, or you need to call. Walk us through the okay. process. I do. Things- How do I open doors? Okay. How do I put my products okay. in Galston? Okay, we, it's it's the grassroots yes. way. It's, is what we do. It's it. We've guerrilla done it. warfare. Yes. It's like I don't care. I'm. I, I got. This is my thought. I have nothing to lose. Right. So it doesn't matter. I'm. I'm not going to try to impress you. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to be real, and I'm going to do what I need to do. So if I need to call you and say, "Hey, how's it?" and I've done things where I've not. I, I've kind of segwayed myself into things mm-hmm. where, like, I'll know what a buyer's name is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm calling, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, can I speak with them real fast? Well, who are you? I'm like, Lisa, uh, I, I'm returning their call. A lot of times they're not returning. I'm not returning a call. Right. But I want to talk to you. And so as soon as I get to talk to you, I'm going to start pitching. So what's the pitch? Like, it's just like, my name is Lisa. I have an amazing salsa. I want to see if I could bring some into you. I'd love to meet with you. Um, when can I send you some samples? Um, anything I can, it, it just, it, it's one of those things that's off the cuff. I can't, because each person's personality yeah, is different. Exactly. And each so you can't do that with everybody. And, but, and it's big stores, it's small stores, it's little mom and pop stores. I mean, I, you know, drove to Ojai to drop off a box of four salsas for a store manager to taste it. Because we've gone on the internet and we're like, okay, let's try these stores. And we drive there and we drop off samples and, and. Or we find names of somebody, like Lisa said, and we'll say, uh, and it'll be all packaged and it'll be addressed to them. So, of course, they're going to take the package. Can I tell you a story of what happened to me with Trader sure. Joe's? Is This is really funny. I showed up at their door and um, it's, it's an undisclosed building in uh, Monrovia, Duarte, whatever. And I had left a package for them, for the buyer there, because I had heard who the buyer was. I'm like, OK, so I'm just going to show up. I'm just going to drop off stuff. I got an email. That said, I don't know who you were. Like, you're not authorized to come into this building. We we don't want your products. We don't want anything. And so he sent this nasty email. I'm like, I apologize. I'm so sorry. But did you try them? Did you try the salsa? You know, I don't know who you think you are. And, you know, all this another so nasty email. Argument. And so I said, I, I apologize again. But can you let me know when you try them? So a year later, the buyer uh, emailed me randomly. And asked me, you know, I, I want to try some stuff. And by then I wasn't doing salsa. I was just doing frozen food. So I couldn't even help him. So it was one of those things that even if they say no, you have to keep going. You have to keep no matter what. You have to keep a smile on your face and just keep going forward because there's more rejections than there are acceptances. Right. You get used to no, but it's it's that one yes that makes all the difference in the world. What's the ratio? Yes to no's. Uh, honestly, there's like... Eight, eight, eight to ten. Eight, eight to ten. No, eight. Yeah, eight, eight yeah. to ten yeah. uh, rejections to the two that you get. Yes. It's so hard. that's a twenty percent. It's not bad. Yeah. It's and not. But the two you get doesn't usually happen that right it at that moment. Months. It takes months. Sometimes a year. Um, but 
the yeses usually, you know, it winds up being something, and 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 it has recently. So you gotta it's be all coming together. You gotta be relentless. We are. We are. Yes, and we are. We just it, we've been working like on Costco. It's almost been a year, and we just got a, a, a notification a week ago that we're going to be doing road shows with them. Mm-hmm. Took us a year. Like it shouldn't take a year. Like, but it is. It's a process. So now some people say that if Costco places an order with you. You're in deep trouble because they're going to ask for thousands of whatever you produce, your product is, and then you have you don't have to have capital to to make it happen, and then you don't have to to get the you know the you put the order, and then you they take like sixty days, ninety days sometimes to pay you. We, we're used to the sixty days. It's always sixty days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and you know. Th- like you said with Costco, we heard that too, and um, we were very original. hesitant because they asked us to to put the salsa in Costco, but they wanted the large size jars. And Lisa and I talked, and we said, "No, we're, we're going to have to pass on Costco because we're not going to customize everything. And what if it, you know it, right. it doesn't go through?" So um, yes, it wound up where they really wanted it, and they're letting us use our own jars on a road show as a test so that we we don't jump in that way and they know you know if it sells the product, if it sells mm-hmm. that's yes. amazing so I mean, we, we thought they would never Costco, yeah, I mean, we thought they were never gonna, they were gonna say bye-bye and but what, they didn't and what they do is they do a four-day road show so you're you're in there for four days so like a thursday friday saturday and sunday they pick the stores that they think that you're going to do the best at and so I, i'm just hoping for the best if we do really well they could possibly put us in line which means you're in the store. But Costco, it's not national. It's, we're doing regional. You know, it's a region. So now you have the process in place. Now you know how to produce or mm-hmm. make the salsas. So walk me through that, the process. How long does it take to get from the raw material to the actual final product? How do you go? How do you quality control? All that stuff, prices, all that stuff. We, we work with a co-packer, um, Hyden's Foods, out in Anaheim. And she's a, the company. It's a family-owned business, and they're fantastic. So what we do is she'll – I'll give her the recipe. She prices everything out because she buys it for – she does a lot of production for a lot of other companies as well. So she kind of knows how much products are going to be so we could come up with our, our pricing. Before, it wasn't like that. But now it's been where we have somebody that helps us do that. So it makes it a little easier. But when you're starting at the beginning, you have to do all that yourself. You're in L.A. at the produce um, you know, the produce section right. um, down off of Alameda or off Soto, right, they have downtown, all those. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. it was picking up crates and uh, boxes of whatever. Oh, you, jalapenos. Tomatoes, jalapenos. Yep. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So now you go there, you, I mean, they have your recipe and they actually manufacture the product for you. Mm-hmm. We're there. We're yes. watching it to make sure and we're tasting it to make sure everything tastes the way it's supposed to. So there's quality control there. They've been making our products for for quite a few years, so they know what we're looking for. Um, and, I mean, they, they do a fantastic job. It's What's the margin in your industry? Like a restaurant usually is 15 to 20 percent, you know, revenue. Uh, what, what's your? It's about, I want to say probably around 30 percent, if 30. that, if that, you know, like around there. Around there. Yeah. So revenue and yeah, then yeah, yeah. profit, you, you have to take right. it out. You said something also that, uh, actually made me think about it. You said that you want to talk about how difficult it is to be a business owner by itself, but to add being a woman, a minority, it, make it, it makes it even more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about it. I, I think it makes it more difficult because automatically women, it, it, from, my, from my standpoint, are, you're dealing with mostly male buyers, so they they take males more serious than they do a woman, you know. So right there, um, minority they just being a minority is difficult, you know, in its own right. So it's it, that makes things even more difficult, difficult, difficult. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like venture capitalists, all the funds are mostly men. Absolutely. So it's more difficult. Sometimes they don't understand a product that is intended for women. Is that they don't relate it to. So it's something that we have to work on it, correct? Uh, no, uh, yes, you do. Absolutely. So now, uh, what's your, more, your most important experience in this venture, in your 
business, what is the most important experience that you have at this point? What would you say, this is it, I learned this? Oh, I've learned not to give up. I, I mean, honestly, that's, is that what you're asking me? Yes. I, I've learned not to give up because even though things seem like they're down in the dumps, you just have to, you have to, you have to believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, no one will. Nobody. Nobody. What do you think? Yeah. No, it's, it's, um, it's true. You do, you have to, you have to believe in yourself because only you can push yourself to that limit of success. Um, you can't rely on people, on, you know, someone, uh, helping you, uh, financially. It's, it's all about you. So you have to believe. And if you work hard enough and you believe enough, Mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll, it'll come true. Yeah. Maybe not. Today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually mm-hmm. you'll reach that point. Yeah. Have you guys have any failure that was important in your life in terms of your business, of course? Any failure that really mark a moment in your life that really changed and reveal something, you know, oh, wow, that wow moment coming from a failure. Yeah. HSN was my big failure. That was like a disaster. That was like, like, I'm still... I'm still recovering yeah, from yeah. it. What, like, what is HSN? It, Home Shopping Network. Okay. So we went. I went on there, and uh, the person that was shipping our products was not shipping them correctly. She, one of the, the president of HSN at that time, got one of our um, packages, and it was broken up. So they stopped all of our orders. We had purchased tons of it for inventory, and it, that was that. And I still had to pay for all that, and it, there was no movement. And that was... Yeah, financially it, it, it and, and mentally and emotionally hard to hard to recoup, I, you know, oh, and man. and up until that point, everything was great because mm-hmm. the products that they were selling uh, uh, to the country on HSN were the same ones that um, were being sold on Williams Sonoma, mm-hmm. uh, fro- our, the frozen food line, uh, which is a Mexican line. And um, yeah, that was that was, was a disaster. disaster. It was it was crushing. Uh, Lisa called me from there because uh, I couldn't go, and and uh, it was they, they they made her cry. Oh and, yeah, it was and bad. Lisa so, doesn't cry for anything yeah. or anybody. Now, how but many they just broke her how down. many orders did you get from? We sold out. We sold out. This is meaning the thing. thousands. Meaning no, no, because they don't start off with that. So when when you working with HSN, they give you a a, a small margin, but they want to make sure that you have just in case that you have more to fulfill, like for the next week or so. So we had that for the next week or the next couple of weeks. And after the, and it was about a week later, week later when the president stopped all that. So that was disastrous because we had all that inventory. We had nowhere, we had nowhere else, no channel to sell it. So we were stuck with all that. What do you do? I cried. Besides crying, what do you I, do with the inventory? Because I, you had to do something. We tried selling it. We tried selling it. And some of it we couldn't do. I mean, it was we, just. So you, got, you we got donated in, to donated, yeah, the local But shelters. you got into a debt because you invested yes. in the production. Yes, yeah. we did. Are you out of the debt already? Not we yet. are working on that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We are working on that. <laughs> it is, I'm telling you, uh, they. What you, do you learn? Excited. What do you learn from that experience then? You can't believe everything that people tell you. They told us one thing. I believed them. And they're Goliath, and I am a little tiny person. Right. And, and I got and so excited that I, I lost. You know what it is? Yes. I, I got, got emotional. Excited. And when you get emotional, you make a bad decision. You have to be logical. And I don't get emotional very often. Yeah. I, I screwed up. Yeah, because probably the TV. Ooh, yeah, right, glamour. Right. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and from learning for that so, is why we told Costco no. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to do it your way because all we could see was we're going to make. 50,000 bottles of salsa of 32 ounces. And who's going to buy a 32 ounce, you know, uh, when the, next to you on the shelf, you can buy this uh, a salsa, not ours, for two ninety nine. you know, and, and ours is healthy and no preservatives. So we said no. And I don't know. I we just got scared. We're scared now. We are honestly, we're, we're, we're traumatized. Scared, yeah. So you learned that you cannot be emotional. Never. And I think also you have learned that you have to know about your limitations. Absolutely. What your limits are. Yes. You cannot get into a deal of what, what 100,000 bottles and then how you want to produce exactly. it. Where's the money to right. make it happen? So you have to be very rational, you know, no emotions. Yes, absolutely. And take decisions based 
on that, on re real factors. Yeah, you'd be realistic. Yeah, you want to do that. Yeah, you want to. I mean, those are things that everybody dreams of, but the reality is you just can't. So you have to, like you said, you have